guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lesia and today I'm getting back to doing wrap-up videos and TBR videos. So I thought I would share the books that I read during November. Wasn't much, only read four books. They were pretty good though, or pretty interesting, at least we have something to discuss. So let's get into it. A book that you already heard me mention in my last bookish video was this one, and this was The Wrath and the Dawn by Renee Adier. Obviously you've heard about it already on my channel, but also on plenty of other bookish channels. This is a retelling of A Thousand and One Nights, and it's featuring Shazi, who is a young girl of 16, who in uh, order to get revenge for the death of her best friend, uh, volunteers to marry the Caliph and basically falls in love with him instead of murdering him and the story escalates. I gave this three stars and I had some time to think about it since the last time I spoke about it and I think that the, it gave me a bit of clarity and you know, closure on the book. I haven't finished the series yet, haven't read The Rose and the Dagger yet, looking forward to that one, but still, um, this book was fun and quick and I enjoyed it, but still, even in retrospect, it still feels a bit like insta-love, because he hadn't known him long enough or deeply enough till the end of the book, basically, to draw any kind of conclusion and, um, Another topic that I would like to address is a topic that I didn't address in my previous video and that is um, the issue of the marriage. Basically it had to be consummated in order for Shazi to become his legal wife and as we learn later, sorry if I'm spoiling stuff here, if I am, if you haven't read it, skip on to the next one. But what I'm trying to say is that basically Shazi um, is the first girl that um, our great mysterious Kalith is actually interested in, which is why he consummates the marriage with her so that she can become his wife. And uh, when I was reading Goodreads reviews, I heard a lot about the fact that it was considered rape, because when Shazi went into the marriage, she didn't really didn't want to have sex with him. Um, but what I'm trying to point out here is that uh, the moral complexity here is a bit bigger than that because Shazi volunteered, she obviously knew what it was, uh, what was entailed in the responsibilities of being his wife. It's pretty clear that she would have to consummate the marriage if she intended to survive. It doesn't make her agreement come from the heart, but it doesn't make it rape because she kind of did volunteer for it. Um, I know it's a tricky subject and I might get some hate for it, but um, pretty much I like that this book is uh, putting this into the narrative because it shows us the, the spirit of the world, basically what women had to go through. And of course it isn't pleasant, but also Shazi wasn't dragged into it and none of the other girls really had to consummate their relationship before their deaths, which actually gives us a moment of clarity and pro points for our main love interest. So yeah, that's me for this book. If you want to hear more thoughts, you can check the previous videos and we're moving on to the next one. The next book I read is the second book in the School of Good and Evil series by Shoma Chayani. Chayani? If anyone knows a page where you can actually listen how the name is pronounced, I would really appreciate it because I'm slowly dying over here trying to pronounce it. It's, it's just, it's killing me. Alright, so I spoke about the first book in the series, but didn't really talk about this one, and this is the second one, and I liked it more. The books are getting thicker as we go forwards, which is a good sign, I guess. And it's still pretty much middle grade, but it has this hint of very serious and dark overtones. As I said, the, the series, they are very, very dark. I mean, there's death, there's issues of equality here. If you didn't know, the series focuses on two girls, Sophie and Agatha, who involuntarily kind of get into the school for good and evil, where there are two faculties and basically their positions are reversed and Sophie ends up being the witch and Agatha is ending up becoming the princess, even though their uh, basic personalities at the start of the book kind of entitle something different. So basically this second book is very different because we have a different setup here. Um, the faculties of good and evil are changing places and basically what's happening here is there's a faculty of princes and princesses. 
Um, so there's a fight and princesses suddenly realize they don't really need princes to be in their fairy tales at all, that they're mature women capable of uh, doing their own stories and everything is thrown into deep disarray and between all of this happening there's Sophie and Agatha trying to figure out whether um, their fates are tied to one single boy or whether they need actually only each other. So it's a story of friendship and it's still brutal. I'm so waiting for the third book. I mean, I have it. I'm just waiting to read it. I'm waiting to find out whether um, any of those injustices of the world, such as uh, deaths of characters and uh, sir, people that don't get good grades become servants and such stuff whether it will <sighs> whoops whether it will actually get fixed on or not because this is something that's vital for me to know whether there's justice in the story or not but basically this story rocks much advised i gave it five stars can't wait for the third one the end of november signaled the goodreads choice awards and the only book on the romance section which i was aware of was this book and obviously it now it ends with us by colleen hoover and the other books all had those kind of sexy covers with naked bare-chested men on the cover not quite my thing i like the covers to be more mature if are they considered mature if they're kind of naked? I don't mean that mature, I mean the other mature, you know, like dressed up, sexy but not too sexy kind of covers, you know? That stuff. Anyway, to vote for the romance category, I hurried up and got myself the Colleen Hoover book. And this is my first Colleen Hoover book, never read anything by her totally first impression. Don't know what kind of stuff she usually writes. Obviously, I love this. I gave it five stars. Obviously. Why obviously? Mostly because this book is uh, very serious, but also funny and also very touching. And I just loved it. It's following Lily and uh, Lily's story picks up as she meets a guy who's kind of different from the guys that she usually meets. He's a uh, very serious but quirky but also with humor and he's sexy and she kind of likes him but the relationship isn't really going anywhere just yet and she's also reminiscing about Atlas who is a homeless boy that she met in her youth and her teenage years and she is reminiscing about that time with him while also kind of getting involved with that other dude. The dude's name is Ryle by the way. Really cool setup but um, if you don't know anything about the book basically this is all that you want to know about it because because if you read even a little bit even one review on goodreads you'll probably get a sense of something that's kind of underlying in this book or i don't know anything that could kind of throw you off so if you haven't read it just go into it blind best way to do it. Why? Because I have heard reviews that made me actually want to pick this up and even though everyone was really discreet about it, I knew that something was gonna happen, kind of something, I don't know what, and then I kept a very watchful eye on everything that was happening to kind of figure out where it was going and that kind of diminished the heaviness of the blow when it came. So yeah, if you haven't read it, just put it on your TBR, you'll enjoy it. Not your typical romance, definitely something to think about in this book, totally love the topic. If I had to compare this book with something that you probably read, surprisingly I would compare it with Eleanor and Park. To those who read it maybe kind of get the sense of why, but yeah, um, kind of really important issue here. Love the characters, love the narration, it's first person, which I'm not definitely not typically a fan of but that was kind of very very uh, nice and I liked the character and I sympathized with the characters and I found myself drawn into the story which was basically all that I needed and if you read this book well you probably know how I feel right I stayed until three o'clock in the morning reading this one because I had a hundred pages left and I couldn't go to sleep without finishing it because I knew I couldn't fall asleep when I was thinking about what was happening in the middle of the book. So I had to finish it. I totally loved it. Much recommended. Go read it. Last book I'm gonna be showing you today is 
The Man Who Spoke Snakeish by Andros Kivirak, and this is a book I brought with me from Estonia from my summer trip. I saw it in the English bookstore section and I was like, hey, never read anything by an Estonian author, that sounds like fantasy, that sounds like something I want to read, so I read it. And it took me a long, long time. Gave it three stars, still debating whether it's three or two, but still it might be interesting for some people. It did get really good reviews from the Estonians, so maybe the Estonians feel something that I don't from this book, but anyway. Following a main protagonist who speaks snakeish, which is a language that allows you to communicate and command all kinds of animals and talk with snakes. And uh, basically this is about the transition of society in Estonia from where people used to live in the forest and they all spoke snakeish and then um, Europeans came and conquered and introduced them to the Christianity and the faith and everyone started moving into the village from the forest and started farming and doing all this other stuff and our main hero, it's his story from where he starts out as a little boy and then he grows up to be the old man that he is and he's talking about his life and it's basically very 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 slow going things do happen in the book but so slowly and the impact of them on the story kind of diminishes because you don't really i didn't identify or like the main character i felt a lot of contempt from him a lot of sadness and melancholy and anger and it frustrated me no end. Even though I completely agreed with everything the character was saying or kind of acting in most, in most areas, not all of them. When it came to the village, I understood how he felt, I understood how he felt to be left behind in the forest where nobody else is living because everyone has abandoned the old ways for uh, things that don't have any value. It's about how people abandoned for example, the life in the forest where they could have spoken snakeish and they could have had the magic that was in those words and they didn't have to hunt, they could have basically their food and meat every day and they switched it all, they casted it off in order to live in a village, to plow and work hard and eat nothing but a little tiny piece of bread. Um, I'm, of course, this is just, you know, my impression, it's deeper than that, but the point is that it's about how hard it is to be the only one left and how nothing goes your way, so it's a bit of a tough read. Wouldn't read it in Christmas season, definitely not a very uplifting story. And then there was only one character which I really liked and then something happened and I was like, but why? But why is this book so hard on everything? This is just driving me crazy. Also another thing I didn't care for is the sexual objectification that was going on here. Not too much, not really. It didn't really get in the way of reading too much, but I felt like the main character wasn't mature enough to uh, figure out what was lust or sexual attraction from actual love, and he was using the word love. Maybe it's uh, the purpose of the narrator, but it annoyed me, frustrated me beyond end, and this is why when I actually finished it I was like, Thank God, now I can move to more interesting things. So there you go, those are the four books that I read during uh, November. Now we're going into the festive season, so I'm going to be reading lots of ton fun books. If you want to see a TBR, please let me know. I know it's the fifth already, but still, there's time to do a TBR. So let me know what you have read in the past month and whether any of those books spark your interest and let me know. Uh, don't forget to give me a thumbs up always feels really nice when I see more thumbs up on their video and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye!